I fear we are witnessing the beginning of the steady disintegration of democracy itself in our country. Those are the words of the former Labour Home Secretary, Lord David Blunkett, who joins us now. Hello, Lord Blunkett. Good evening. It is a concern, isn't it? Uh, who do we blame, um, the government or disobedient people? Well, I'm not into blame. Uh, I'm into trying to analyse who's made the right decisions and when. Mm. And my, the thrust of my article was, for goodness sake, get a grip. Uh, work out what it is you want to do, both in terms of tackling the virus, but also in terms of economic recovery, and then stick to it. And whilst the, there are arguments about what's happened in Scandinavia, particularly in Sweden, yes. the reaction you now see in countries like Germany and France and ourselves is trying to rerun what we did earlier in the year. And if it had worked earlier in the year, we wouldn't be where we are now. So I think there's good reason to say steady nerves, sensible policies, open the uh, Nightingale centres and develop more by perhaps taking over some of the private hospital facilities and devoting those to COVID. Use the new treatments that have come through. We saw it, God help us, with President Trump, uh, the availability of treating people at home before they He was the perfect guinea hospital. pig, wasn't he? Uh, well, that's a really good way of describing <laughs> it, yes. Um, with the emphasis on the latter, I think. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll see next week. But but the the way in which we're scared and frightened isn't actually working. That's what I'm trying to say. And in this country, we work by consent. And when a government loses that consent, then people just say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I don't believe it, or I don't understand it, or the messages are confused. Even today, Nottingham uh, City was going to go into tier three. Yeah. Then it was stopped from tonight so that they could put the whole of Nottinghamshire into tier three uh, a day late. We saw the situation, uh, I can't even remember now, was it last week or the week before when the government weren't going to give any more money and then suddenly they decided 48 hours later yeah. well, they were going to. We, the, we're moving from day to day. The week before they weren't going to and then last week was a, an, an elegant U-turn from the man who could do no wrong to now, to date anyway, Rishi Sunak. I mean, you, you've talked about the confusion, including in your home city of Sheffield, uh, David. Well, yes, we're, we're tier three now, mm. um, but... Part of the city is in the Peak District. You start walking in one area, you end up in Derbyshire, you come from Derbyshire into Sheffield, you move from Tier 1 to Tier 3. Presumably, if you're not with a family member, you could actually be subject to very substantial fines uh, and legal action. And people just don't like it. They just don't like the idea that we're using enforcement rather than persuasion. Uh, we're using the, the, the power of the state, not just the emergency power, but also the 1984 uh, health, Public Health Act. Margaret Thatcher would be turning in her grave. Uh, and we are doing so rather than saying, look, let's reverse it. Health education ambassadors getting the messages out in crucial areas where the virus is clearly at its worst, uh, making sure that those treatments are available, treating those in hospital that really need to be there, but above all, not disrupting so much the social as well as the economic life that we end up with people dying for other reasons rather than COVID. Uh, do you have some sympathy for uh, scientists who have signed up for the Great Barrington Declaration, for example, who are suggesting that there's a more targeted approach to protect the vulnerable and, and get others who are at less... Uh, peril from the virus to, to get back to work and, and get the economy going again. Yes, I do. I mean, politicians and ex-politicians are great at being Johnny-come-latelys, and I, I, I'm fully aware of that. But all, all the way since March, I've been saying widen the advice, um, try and ring the changes with the scientific advisory group, SAGE, try and make sure that it's both balanced in terms of regions but also in terms of voices and perceptions yeah. we've got to have that because otherwise day by day you hear voices coming out saying there'll be 50,000 dead by the end of November you know th th yeah. these things are so horrific 
that people then say, well, sod it, if that's going to be the case and nothing's working, why should we comply? And we can get people to comply. Most people are distancing. Most people are wearing face coverings. Now the scientists have decided that mm. that's really worth doing. Most people are really taking care both of the, the people they love and of their own lives. Persuade them, support them, get the messages across clearly. Uh, do you have some sympathy? You've, of course, been in high office yourself uh, very successfully for many years. And credit to you, whilst you were Home Secretary, I don't think you indulged in, in the blame game or too much political opportunism. So now, with a, a little detachment, Lord Blunkett, do you, do you sympathise with the government, given the fact that really they're following science that itself is quite divided? I have sympathy in the sense that they got themselves on the hook of saying we'll follow the scientific evidence when the scientific evidence is clearly incredibly varied. You know, the old adage that if you got seven economists in a room, you'd have seven different economic yeah. policies. It doesn't quite apply with science. But, you know, peer, peer group review of scientific evidence, interrogation of statistical methodology, just take the announcements yesterday from Imperial College. Yes, they have um, used 360,000 people to self-identify uh, their level of immunity. They prick their fingers, they use the, uh, the equipment that's been sent to them, but they weren't the same 360,000 people. So you weren't comparing like with like. You weren't actually, and I don't think me, most people got this, they weren't actually saying 360,000 people will take the samples and then we'll know whether their immunity is dropping. They were different people. There were three different tranches. So you've got to be prepared to analyse and challenge without becoming a COVID denier and w without conspiracy theories. Because they don't take us anywhere does, does either. It, does it surprise you and sadden you that it's become left versus right, which I find inexplicable? Yes, I think it's partly arisen... Well, it, it's it's become left versus right in terms of um, policies as to whether we should have a a national a full national lockdown, which I don't actually agree with, and I count myself as left uh, versus muddling along as we are at the moment. But actually, it became much more left and right because of the the issue of the north and what was happening. And all credit to them, Tory MPs from. Places like Bury and Bolton joined with Andy Burnham, the the mayor, the great, the mayor of Greater Manchester, yes. in saying, "Look, you, you can't have policies that are imposed from somewhere else. You've got to allow us to have some local discretion." And had that taken place with test and trace from the beginning, and cronyism hadn't handed out these, I mean, eye-watering sums of money. We're talking twelve billion pounds to very large companies and concerns and friends of friends, that leaves a nasty taste in the mouth. If, if we could have a bit more transparency about that and a bit more uh, willingness to say, look, we've got to go for the best, whoever they are, whatever their politics, whatever their background, bring forward the people who really can make a difference. Don't just recycle what we've got. Because, Mark, it was Einstein who said doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome is the definition of insanity. Well, that's exactly right. It does feel like Groundhog Day, that it's marked all over again. One final thought for you, uh, Lord Blunkett. I'm sure you're an admirer of Keir Starmer, perhaps even a friend, and I'm sure you were pleased to see his election uh, to the leadership of the Labour Party in April. However, are you a little surprised by his decision to call for a, a, another national lockdown, which he, he described as a, the circuit breaker lockdown? W well, were you surprised by that? Um, my first question, I'm, I'm not a, a close friend, but I had a, a most incredible sense of relief when he was elected. I, I'd supported Lisa Nandy, who's now the Shadow Foreign Secretary, and I hope she's got a phenomenal future yes. uh, for the people within the Labour Party. And I know tomorrow he'll be handling the terrible legacy of the anti-Semitism uh, which uh, uh, raised its head under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. That was a, a stain not just on the Labour Party and uh, some of its members but on uh, our political democracy. The question, the answer to your second question is no, I don't actually agree with a national lockdown for the reasons I've spelt out tonight, Mark. I just think 
a very different approach, decentralizing, devolving, persuading, using all the talent we've got, the 65,000 people who were re-recruited back into the health service, health and medical workers, where are they? Are they being paid? Are they being deployed? 600,000 volunteers offered their services. Where are they? Have they been deployed? These are the kind of questions that I think the government need to answer.